Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of Natsume's Book of Friends. We're on episode 8 of season 1. Last time we, uh, we followed Little Fox Girl, the Little Fox Girl episode. That was, that was pretty good, pretty wholesome, very cute, you know, and at the same time, a little emotional. <laughs> and, yeah, I mean, it was just great to see Natsume maturing and... Like, how different he feels from episode one. And just get in another friendly yokai. Hopefully, we will see it in sometimes. I feel like she has, like, pretty good setup for, like, another follow-up showtime with her. Uh, compared to some of the other yokai. So, this episode, I believe the preview was, um... About a person who can also see ghosts and had, like, a relationship with another yokai. But now that he can't the relationship disappeared or something and we'll see how natsume tackles that you know should should they just uh value his happy life now like is he happier now that he can't see yokai probably questions like that so get your copy of the episode ready um my episode length is 23 minutes 52 seconds long no studio logo stuff and at the end of the episode We'll talk about it a bit. So yeah, hopefully we'll maybe see some of the the side characters a bit more. Sasada, Munch Guy. I feel like we need more with the Munch Guy. I feel like he was set up to be like, a, uh, have more of an impact, but he's like less than like every other side character I feel so far. So, but anyways, let's let's actually start this up to get your episode ready. And I'm counting down in three, two, one, go! Starting with the intro, turn on subs. <laughs> Don't forget, it's rooted in. Bam, bam, bam. <laughs> Such a good song, dude. Yeah, that ominous looking guy. Little spooky. He kind of looks like that to me. I don't know if that's a coincidence or not. He was like an end boss or something. <laughs> right. We've seen, I believe, everyone besides Smoking Person. There was like a gray blob, but I don't remember if we saw him or not. All right, let's get into this. <laughs> oh, oh, wait, no, this is the die. Yeah, from the preview. It's gonna say, Is it Monk Boy? <laughs> Fireflies. I've seen them. Don't they only come out at night? I've saw them once at a cottage. Very pretty. Oh. <laughs> Stealthy. Oh. Don't touch. <laughs> I like your design, though. Ooh. Saved. 
literally almost died. But not really, because Nianko was there. Fleeting light. I wonder if she's a firefly spirit. Is that what it's getting at? You okay? <laughs> hey, that's a big bottle. <laughs> You've seen that before with the shrine the do died episode right oh, actually no i guess she never saw it it was just worshiping right right i forgot okay made sense there's always that talk of children can see paranormal stuff i feel like i had a couple encounters when i was younger but it's definitely hard to tell if it was real or just my mind on horror movies. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> Firefly. Oh. Uh. Come on. <laughs> oh. Nobody likes it. <laughs> True. Curly noodles. What a ghostly name. Yeah, she's definitely a firefly spirit. Oh. <laughs> Annoying. <laughs> Keo. That's his name. The guy's name, I'm guessing. Thank you, Mickey Ito. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Oh, I guess maybe it was her name before. Not his name. I wonder if that's what happened to Reiko. She couldn't uh, return all the names because she couldn't see anymore. That's romantic. <laughs> ah, lore. Descendants. It's interesting that yokais have a lifespan. Like we kind of established last episode. Because they're not quite ghosts, but I guess... I guess it made sense. Kinda. <laughs> it's yokai logic, is it? What the heck? That's a big boy. He's he's just vibing. <laughs> Leave that guy alone, man. It's just a big boy vibing in the pond. Oh. 
<laughs> Did he look so creepy, actually? Cope. <laughs> it's just a viber. Wish he would have. <laughs> That's true, too, I guess. Aki Fumi. Okay. Relatable to Natsume. Oh. <laughs> oh, look at him. So young. Ah. <laughs> nice. I can understand him though. Choosing to reject it almost or wanting to reject it. Oh. <laughs> Wow. I wonder if he's doing that on purpose or not. Feels like it's almost setting up for that with how he's looking at the pond. Or he just has like such strong feelings but he can't remember them. That's why he goes to the pond. I like this though. This is kind of like Romeo and Juliet but like you know, star-crossed lovers, but it's, like, harder. <laughs> it's, like, way, way farther. <laughs> but I feel like everyone can see Niento. <laughs> when they, like, zoomed up on him. Yeah. Early Natsume would, wouldn't care, I feel like, but he's changed so much. Oh, changed a good amount. My dude's just chilling there like 24 7, dude. Hmm. <laughs> just asked yeah it's one or two. Oh. Oh. okay so he literally can't okay I was wrong <laughs> Yep. Uh Yep. That's what I thought. Mm. 
Mm. I mean, it's... even if he could see yokai, it would be a difficult path to love a yokai. Ah, uh, no. Oh, new wife. Wonder if he'll. Does he won't tell him that uh, she's still watching him, over him. Oh. Mm, probably not. But what can she really do? Though I'm sure she is, like, genuinely happy for him. Ah. Uh. Yo, it's your face of it. Cute. Head patting, you know, you're, you're cool if you head pat people in anime. Oh, Hotaru. That's what he named her. Man, I'm feeling it. It's hitting. That was very beautiful. <laughs> Yeah. Wonder why he heard uh the other name. Oh Ho Hotaru's Firefly, I guess. Ah oh, no. And fireflies don't last on too, probably like a year at most. And then at least you can finally see her one more time, yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh no. What the fuck? I thought he's just vibing. Okay. Save her, please. Oh. 
Yeah, we didn't see Bid Bid in the end till last episode. Oh no. No. Run. Did he do it? <laughs> bont. Good bont. Oh. Yay. Uh... I'm sad. This is so... Such a good episode, man. And it's beautiful. I wish I, I want, it makes you want to see fireflies again. Again, I only saw them once. They were kind of like, they glowed like that, but they were like blinking from what I remembered. And they're more yellow than green. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I know goodbye. Hmm. <laughs> True, technically. So cute. Yeah. It's a good way to look at it. That was a good episode, man. Nice little love drama. Almost feel a bit classical. Like I feel like it's a, a familiar type of story, but it still hit hard because, uh, as per usual, executed well. Yeah, let's vibe to this relaxing ending before we talk about it a bit more.
less total at the end. We done it. We done a line offer. That's the episode quota <laughs> completed. We we're spoiled last episode. Still think Nianto looks like Bulbasaur in this ending when he's looking behind. <laughs> Alright, what do we got to look forward to? Uh-oh, evil man. Oh, an exorcist. Uh, interesting. Interesting, interesting. That's pretty hype. But yeah, another Bader episode from Natsume. And then each episode just makes you... Or solidifies its uh, reputation as a certified classic. Because it, it is really just, like, good. Even though, like... I said in the credits, um, also thanks for watching if you're dipping out, I'm just going over some thoughts. Um, even though like this, this episode's plot itself felt like very familiar. I can't really like put my finger on where I've heard it before, but I feel like I've probably heard like iterations of this before, you know, lovers. And obviously I'm not talking about like the obvious, like Romeo, Juliet, star-crossed lovers things. Cause I guess this is almost like a, an extreme version of two individuals that there's just so many boundaries put in place that it's almost impossible for them to be together. Um, obviously, this one has the same sort of vibe with it, though I would say even harder because, <laughs> you know, one's literally a spirit and one's not. And I do think, like, it technically would be possible if you could still see yokai would be possible for them to be in a relationship it'd be a very weird relationship but it's still possible but at the at the end of the day it's probably i don't know if you can say better but it probably is better as a human being to uh to move on to a real real person um but uh, no i liked it i liked um otaru's whole um otaru's character i'm still interested in why uh she was named koji or why he heard the name koji because it didn't it didn't really come up during this whole thing unless it was like related to the the other story about the the, the 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 human and the mountain king yokai coming together, which I guess would be an example <laughs> now that now that I'm thinking about it, of a yokai and human having a relationship, while we don't know the results of it because they leave it open ended. That's like a a new level where they actually could get married, huh? Um, but yeah, I liked her character basically. Her, um, her longing for, I forgot his name, for Guy. <laughs> it was, a, it's, to be fair, it was a weird name, like Tsuki Fumi or something, Fuji. Um, and then, like, her attachment to Natsumi, just, like, the nostalgia factor of having someone to see him, almost trying to use him as a replacement. And through the whole time before she met her final resolution, I'm sure she was happy, but just because you're happy for someone and, you know, it's probably the right thing, uh, doesn't mean you can't feel sad about it, right? And her and the ending was just beautiful. Just basically giving up on her eternal life. Well, I don't mean, I, I, I don't know if it's eternal. I guess it isn't because they implied that she's from descendants of the Okai fireflies from the past. So she does have a long a lifespan, but definitely way longer than a firefly. Like, let me just Google. Google how firefly lifespan. Two months. <laughs> Not even a year. I thought it was maybe a year, but I guess a year is like a long time for an animal or an insect in particular. Yeah, she basically gave up who knows how many years of life into two months just to see him one final time. You know, because he can't see her despite her being with him at the pond like, all the time. But 
basically like giving up almost eternal life just to physically see him even if it's as a firefly and they can't actually like interact but it did seem like he realized at least he realized that that was her near the end um which was very touching that uh her efforts got through to her i mean i i i would hope so if she made such a big sacrifice and it didn't get through it would have been way too tragic so that was good um some other stuff probably like the most beautiful um scene for me personally actually the firefly thing was also was probably up there but i also really enjoyed the flashback montage of um hotaru and suki i think that's suki fumi or something like that <laughs> um they're like wholesome together as a uh, yokai and human and when he lost her or lost vision of her and actually admitting their love for each other while both of them couldn't uh couldn't see it was very very good like extremely good for me um and the, obviously the last sacrifice thing was good too um and i, I think like just watching him get married you know not to make comments that he couldn't understand Hotaru's last words was a bud, but maybe those last words got through to um Tsukifumi. Which it, it seems like he did, at least, because he understood something. And maybe he can fully, you know, because he was staying at the pond, because even though he found someone happy, he, he still had lingering feelings, as we saw, like, how happy he was, you know. And it, um, as, like, a person who can see yokai, so I think that was like the final push so we can fully accept moving on. Because I think without that, even though he said he would stop coming to the pond, I don't think he would like 100% be um, ready to move on, to be honest. Even if you tell yourself, it's it's harder to actually put that into action, I think. Um, and I guess like another big thing about this episode is how... Uh, Suki Fumi's uh, parallel to Natsume, both people who could see yokai, both people who had troubled, a troubled childhood growing up because of this um, talent. And I guess just like, it, it adds the sense of possible, a possible end to Natsume's uh, powers when he grows up. Also just theory crafting, I, I said in the reaction, maybe that's why, um, Reiko, maybe like Reiko lost her vision when she grew up, and that's why this whole she made all those promises she just couldn't keep since you know she can't see them anymore. I think there's a possibility, um, and just like Natsume reflecting on that, like what would he do? Um, you know, he even said it himself, I feel like early Natsume would have, like, episode one would have been happy with that, but now, like, how it's made him grow and his experiences with Nienko and stuff like that, um, you definitely, I don't know if, like, like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> like, I'm sure, like, maybe technically it would be better for him just to stray get away from the yokai world but it's definitely like not a hundred percent thing he wants anymore in his life but you know he makes the final realization that even if that time comes at least he'll have the the memories that he'll cherish forever kind of like what he saw in the hotaru's thoughts and you can assume those are just um sukifumi also remembers all those thoughts too so even though it's a fleeting relationship with the old guy, he can still um he can still look back and remember things. <laughs> but yeah, what a great episode. I liked it. I dude, it kinda hit me hard, man. No tears, but I wouldn't blame you if you shed one for this, because it's good. I, I I love love stories like this. It's always like the ultimate form of drama and entertainment, so very pleasant watch. But yeah, that was pretty good, man. I, I liked the episode a lot. And the next episode looked pretty hyped because we even mentioned while watching the opening that 
Um, we're only missing, I feel like, two two main characters, or two side characters featured in the opening, the smoking yokai and um, the sinister looking guy, and this is the sinister looking guy. So you know he's an exorcist, which is interesting, because I feel like, even though he ha like, it might be like the natural opposite to Natsume, who's been, you know, willingly freeing souls i mean i just no no i guess they were all willingly like giving back the name and free either them passing on or them just gaining their freedom back um, this guy probably just takes forcefully uh removes the spirit the yokai from the world so i feel like maybe they can clash their personalities might clash also i forgot to say in the review but shout out to the the firefly eating monster i love his design dude it looks so goofy, but at the same time, probably one of the spookier designs we've seen so far. <laughs> I'm glad he just got a friendly bonk on the head. You know, he's, he's not doing anything wrong, chilling. Man's got to eat, right? <laughs> uh, but yeah, as per usual, great episode. Great time watching it. Um, Hopefully you enjoyed too. If you did, consider giving a like comment let me know and if you haven't subscribed please consider subscribing it helps me a lot helps just grow the channel and show uh more people uh that this reaction is available for people to watch you know just want to get it out there <laughs> but yeah thank you a lot hopefully you had a great time and i'll see you next time on some more natsume's book of friends until then peace